Okay, first up we're going to look at some preparation techniques. Now you only really have three scenarios. First is a brand new crash helmet straight out of the box. Obviously there's no scratches or stone chips to contend with. So we really just start to strip the helmet down at this stage. Okay, I'm just taking the vents off here. I know some helmet painters leave the vents on, but you know, if they're all the time it takes to take them off really, you might as well just do the job properly. I'm just prizing the end of the vent up with my nail and just running a scalpel blade underneath and they pop off in just a few seconds. We can paint them separately and then rebond them again when the helmet's finished. Any stickers or decals, just hit it with a heat gun or a hair dryer. I prefer the heat gun, gets the job done a little bit quicker. And you'll find that the sticker comes off a lot easier. If you don't use heat, you could be picking away at this for three or four minutes. Now this is a competition helmet, so the lining comes out to be washable. Uh, not all linings come out like this, but if it does, by all means, take it out. I'm just removing the rubber now with a 10A scalpel, very carefully of course. I'm just peeling it back and just working about an inch at a time, just slowly, taking great care not to cut the rubber. And now I'm just using 2 inch masking tape. It's very important to get the entire lining masked up. It's nearly impossible to get overspray off the lining. So I'm just using a series of strips of 2 inch tape. Looks labor intensive but it really only takes about 4 or 5 minutes to mask up the inside of the helmet like this. But make sure you've got it completely 100% covered. Sometimes it's very difficult to take the rubbers off and I know this is not a perfect scenario but from time to time you may have to mask up the rubbers. Uh, I just use a bit of one inch tape and stretch it. As I say in a perfect world you'd remove all the rubbers but sometimes it's just not really possible. Now all we're doing now is taking a red scotch bright and sanding the entire surface quite aggressively with a red scotch bright. It's a good idea to panel wipe or pre-clean prior to this. Make sure you get in all around the edges. Remember any bits that you miss or potential areas where the paint's going to come off. There's no need to prime this helmet. All you do is just use a red scotch bright and it's ready for base painting. Any bits of bare plastic, you might want to put an adhesion promoter or a flexible additive on there. Now the next scenario we have is a crash helmet which is in pretty good order but it's got a few stone chips and stuff around the front and this is quite common. You notice we're sanding it out here with a piece of 220 dry sanding with a rubbing block. It's very very important not to fill these with stopper or putty and I'll explain later in the video why we don't do that but it's important not to fill stone chips. It's much better just to sand them out completely flat. Okay, next I'm just blocking up all the air vents. Now this is extremely important, especially if you're using solvent-based paint. This is what happens when solvent-based thinners comes into contact with a polystyrene lining of a crash helmet. Now obviously this is an exaggeration and you wouldn't possibly get that amount of thinners on the lining. But still you can see it instantly starting to melt. Within about 20-25 seconds, the whole inside of the helmet is completely destroyed. So if you spray in around those open vents with solvent-based paints, you're going to have a detrimental effect to the crash helmet, even though it won't be visible. And on the other hand, this is what happens whenever you soak the polystyrene lining with water-based thinners. Absolutely nothing. So it's extremely important to get all those vents completely plugged up. Even if you are using water-based paints, don't forget the primers and the clears are still going to have an adverse effect on the polystyrene lining. 
Okay, now I'm just using a pre-clean panel wipe to remove any surface imperfections. And with the holes plugged up, I'm just priming now with the urethane base primer. I'm using my SATA Jet H with a 1.75 setup. And you notice I'm just keeping it local. I'm just spot priming. There's really no point to prime the whole helmet at this stage. Just where the repairs have been. And you can leave that for a few hours or ideally overnight. And sand it down with 600 wet and dry. Okay, our last scenario now is again another brand new crash helmet, but it's got a factory paint job. In a case like that, all we have to do is just wet sand again with 600, just to lose the ridges. There's no point breaking through the clear or anything. As soon as you get it completely flat, you're ready for painting. I'm just using base coat sealer dark here, and it's going straight into my RP with a 1.2 setup. Now, although this helmet, I want this helmet to be base paint white because it's going to be a lot of bright aggressive colours, but it makes a lot more sense just to paint the two light coats of base coat sealer dark first, rather than waste maybe four or five coats of white, just kill it with a couple of light coats of black first to lose those coloured paint edges, and then just apply one coat of white over the top of that. It just cuts down on your paint build up. And that should be your first coat there. You should still comfortably be able to see the pattern underneath. And the second coat will just kill everything for me. I'm spraying about 40 PSI here. And this is a standard SATA RP with a 1.2 setup. Just using my heat gun here for forced drying. You can use an infrared lamp or pretty much anything at all. I just like the heat gun because of the sheer speed. And as soon as you see the polymer binder evaporating off like that, believe it or not, you're ready to mask straight over the top of that. Okay, we're ready for clear coating this helmet, and obviously we're just blocking the vents that we had discussed earlier. Make sure they're completely sealed up. And I'm just laying down the first coat. I'm using my SATA RP with a 1.3 setup. Now obviously these fumes are very, very toxic, and that's why I'm dressed like a Ghostbuster. I'm using my full SATA air fed mask, and I'm even using rubber gloves. The SS cyanides in the clear actually attack the soft tissue in your body, so you really need to protect yourself against this stuff. After the first couple of light coats, I can now start to load it up and get maybe three or four good heavy wet coats on there. Just leave it overnight and darn sanding it down here with 1000 and that's just to lose all those paint edges and discrepancies. You could just polish at this stage but we like to take it to go the extra mile. Just put another stage in there and go back in the next day and re-clear it again with another three good wet coats. Now at this stage we're just using 1500 super fine. And Darren's just looking for any tiny imperfections, any blemishes at all in the clear. We just de nib those. And then it's just a matter of polishing the whole helmet. Once we've got the helmet polished, we obviously have to build it up. I've got the linings back in and I'm just putting the rubber back on now. At this stage you can really make or break a crash helmet. I've seen some real nice paint jobs, but they've been ruined by the quality of the, the build up. You know, just the rubbers haven't been straight and stuff. And it's very easy to do. So what I do is just really work on maybe two or three inches at a time. This is just standard super glue I'm using. Be sure not to get any on the helmet. You can take it off with like cellulose thinners and stuff, but it's a bit of a nightmare. Best just not to spill it in the first place. So you see I'm only really doing maybe two, three inches at a time. And just clamp it on there for about five or ten seconds. Okay, when you come to put the vents back on, 
I'm using double-sided tape. Now, double-sided tape, by definition, is actually a heat tape. There's no point just taking the backing off and putting it on. You really have to heat this tape to make it stick, especially with like a motocross or a competition helmet. It doesn't take a lot of heat. You could just use a hairdryer, but you definitely need to get some heat on there before you bond it back onto the helmet. And it's just a matter of getting everything lined up. And that's pretty much the finishing touches. Just give it one final polish with like a hand glaze. And the helmet's ready for use. I think you've gone too far